I'm Rich Duvarney, your Tehama County Superintendent of Schools. We would like to share this video to shed light on a very serious topic. Here at the Tehama County Department of Ed, not only do we focus on the education of our students, but on their overall well-being. So we were fortunate to collaborate with Empower Tehama and the Red Bluff Police Department on this project. Please take a few minutes to view this very important video containing information on human trafficking. Communication and education for your kids is so vital. We have to be prepared for this. Human trafficking is the exchange of a sexual favor for anything. And it's important to remember that this sexual favor does not necessarily always have to be something physical. It doesn't have to be intercourse between one person and another. This sexual exploitation is sometimes in the form of photographs. It's also sometimes in the form of conversation. They can get your child or if they can get the person into a conversation that's sexually explicit in nature, but it's the exchange of a product that is sexually involved for the exchange of anything. In the state of California, the laws recognize that there does not have to be a monetary value to what is being exchanged. So the exchanged product could be a friendship or it could be a basic need like housing. It could be um, the promise of success. It could be a dating relationship. In the state of California, there's no monetary value to what is being exchanged for that sexual conduct or that sexually explicit action. This can happen to all of our kids. This can happen to your kids. This can happen to my kids. This can happen to the grocery clerk's kids. This could happen to a judge's kids. And it's simply because we all have needs that need to be filled. And all of our needs can be promised in one way or another. According to the Maslow hierarchy of needs, we all have needs and they can fall in very few categories. They could be basic needs, food, water, and shelter. And in those basic needs, that puts our runaway youth at risk. That puts our homeless kids and our foster kids at risk. Another need that we have as a human being is our safety needs. You know, these are our youth that are vulnerable because they're in verbally or sexually or physically abusive families. Um, and they just have the basic need and desire for safety. We also have love as a need. And that's those boyfriend-girlfriend relationships uh, that are being formed or friendships that are being formed. We have self-esteem needs that we need for ourselves. You know, people don't want to be depressed. People want to feel like they belong to something. So we have self-esteem needs. And then we have self-actualization needs. And these are for our youth that are, you know, maybe they have this idea of where they're going to be. They want to be an actress. They want to be a singer. They have this need for accomplishment. These exploiters and these, these predators, they're not these pimps dressed up in, in you know, gold, gold jewelry and fuzzy clothing and hats, you know, walking around with a cane. They are literally whoever our kids need them to be. They are boyfriends and girlfriends. They are that love, you know, the promise of a loving home for somebody who needs that. They're that one friend when somebody doesn't have a friend. You know, that's what makes our youth so vulnerable. These exploiters are not going after the kids with bad parents. They're also going after the kids with good parents. They're not just going after the kids with poor financial situations at home. They're also going after our kids that have successful and stable financial statuses at home. This is a crime that's being committed against our youth of all demographics and all social statuses. These predators are wherever your kids are.
they're trying to form these relationships and they're meeting these kids wherever your kid's playground happens to be. So if it's the skate park, we have found exploiters in skate parks. We have found exploiters in youth groups. We have found exploiters in the foster care system, exploiters in the juvenile hall system. We've found exploiters in the leadership programs in high school. Wherever your child is, is wherever these exploiters are trying to contact them. Grooming is simply making contact and forming a relationship. This can be in many, many ways, depending on what your child's need is. Depending on what your need is, this person is gonna become who you need them to be and they're going to groom you, they're going to groom your child to trust in them. They're going to build a friendship, they're gonna build some loyalty, and it's gonna start off very minute, very small and passive if a predator came up to your child and said, hey, I want to be your friend because I really want to put you in human trafficking, your child is going to say no and run the other way and tell every adult in their path. But if a predator comes up to your child and says, hey, that's great. We both play, we both play Fortnite. That's great. We both enjoy TikToks. Let's, let's start just watching each other's videos. Let's start just playing this game an hour a night. They just start with these little tiny relationships. It's really just initially establishing that contact and then forming a relationship based off of that contact. So if they know that you play Roblox, they're going to say, okay, let's, how about we meet here every, you know, how about we meet once a week at 7.30? Hey, I, and then it, it's gonna progress into, hey, I was online and you weren't online. Well, what were you doing? Where were you at? Who are you with? Who else are you playing with? You know, well, I feel like we never get to play anymore. So then your child may then feel obligated to, to play during that time. And again, it's because we haven't taught them what these red flags are. COVID has really put a laptop, an online device, in every student in Tehama County's hands. But because of COVID and the obligations that parents have, parents may not be home monitoring every movement of the day. And these kids are so socially isolated that they have a desire, they're building de these desires to socially connect with anybody who will talk to them. So when it comes down to pathways that these predators are looking for our kids, they're using online gaming systems and social medias to target our kids, to just simply build that connection. Your child has the intention to just go online, build these friendships for the purpose of the game, but these predators know that this is simply how they dangle the candy in their face and they build that relationship with them. And it's important to remember that these predators are experts at what they do. They're experts at grooming. They will play a video game with the child for weeks on end. If that end result is them baiting them into a further relationship and obligation to that person. Other social media applications are our TikTok application, Snapchat, and Snapchat is huge because not only is it private, not only does it delete all the conversations and all the proof and evidence that we may need on the law enforcement side, there's many, many things on, on Snapchat that happens with complete privacy. So your child can be accidentally sharing their location to their predator. So now your predator knows exactly where you live, knows exactly where your kids are at all times. And it has happened in the past where a predator will make a child believe that they're watching their every move. And that's because of this locator on their Snapchat account. 
it may frighten them into doing something or coerce them into doing something that they don't want to do. And it's very easy to hide conversations, text messages, photographs in these applications if you're not familiar with them. Just in talking about hiding, in Snapchat, there's the For My Eyes Only section, which is password protected that your child can establish and you won't see those photographs in the normal application. I believe if your child has Snapchat, you should have Snapchat. Whether you use it as frequently as them, it's probably not likely, but you should have it so you know the ins and outs of it, so that you know what it's capable of and you know how to navigate through it. If your child has TikTok, you should have a TikTok. Maybe you're not posting videos and music videos of yourselves and that's fine, but you should know that they, through TikTok, they can have private messages with other people. Another thing that I personally recommend is that your child should not have a platform device that you don't have. So if you have a Samsung and you know the ins and outs and how to navigate through a Samsung, your child should not have an iPhone because the chances of you knowing that iPhone as well as you know your Samsung are slim. communication and education for your kids is so vital because we have to be prepared for this. We have to teach our kids what the red flags are. We have to teach our kids what information is safe to get out and what information is not safe to give out. Obviously, we have to keep it age appropriate. If we give a two-year-old a cell phone, you may not have to have the same conversation with them as you have to have a preteen. But you have to recognize how monitored it needs to be. You have to recognize how vulnerable you're letting your child be with the whole world potentially watching them. And that's how you have to think about it. You have to think about it as I am giving them access to the world, yes, which is a great opportunity. They can, many kids use this for virtual tours of, of destinations far beyond Red Bluff. But you're also giving the whole world, destinations far beyond Red Bluff, access to your child. So you have to keep them age appropriate, yes. If they're too young, too young to understand personal safety, which many of our kids are, even at 16 and 17 and 18, which is why I say we have to monitor all the time. It's a nonstop process to monitor what they're doing, what they have done, and what they could do with their applications with the device that we've handed them. So when it comes down to what is at what age, I honestly think whatever age you decide to give your child an online device, whether it's a cell phone, tablet, laptop, or computer, you have to understand your responsibility as a parent to monitor it and then to have those fluid age appropriate conversations. Establishing rules is vital and it's okay. Your child may not like the rules and that's okay. You can also have your child come in and help with the rules and maybe have some input on some of the rules. At my house, we came up with 10 rules and my daughter, she came up with four of the rules on her own. So then when I found her, you know, laying in bed playing on her cell phone, it was nice as a parent to be able to say, you made this rule up, please don't make me have to come down with a consequence on this rule. So sometimes it's helpful in avoiding conflict to just get them involved and you'd be surprised how many good rules they'll come up with because they see their friends already with these devices. I think online stranger danger needs to be a conversation that needs to be had and it needs to be a very fluid conversation. It needs to be a conversation that your child feels comfortable coming to you about, asking questions, and we as parents have to remember sometimes not to overreact and to remember that our job is to educate.